Cities across the globe have historically been positioned along rivers due to their tactical and strategic assets, as well as trade of course. However, with positive economic growth over the last century, cities have had to bridge across these rivers to increase connectivity and relieve pressures on existing crossings. London is no exception to this and has planned 13 new river crossings, but will any of them actually happen? The River Thames is an instantly recognised feature of London, stretching 215 miles from Kemble to the North Sea, right across the heart of the city. There are currently 49 crossing points between Hampton Court and Dartford, including road, rail and pedestrian bridges and tunnels, along with public transport and ferry crossings. As you can see, most are clustered around central London, with a fair few towards the west. However, East London is relatively empty. In December 2015, Boris Johnson, current Mayor for London at the time, announced 13 new river crossings at various locations in the Connecting the Capital document. I've linked it below if you're interested to find out any specifics. The first crossing is the Diamond Jubilee Bridge, which will connect Imperial Wharf and Battersea. It was expected to run alongside the railway bridge for pedestrians and cyclists only, and is named after Queen Elizabeth II as it marks the launch of her Diamond Jubilee River pageant at that location. The second crossing is something you may have known about, which is the Crossrail 2 tunnels, connecting North and South London. The tunnels will connect the stations of Chelsea's Kings Road, or Victoria depending what gets built, and Clapham Junction. This is somewhat likely to happen. The third crossing is the Nine Elms Pimlico crossing, which will link up the Nine Elms development currently happening in the south to Pimlico, a largely residential area. This will just be a pedestrian and cycle crossing, most likely a bridge, and there have been some designs put forward for this. The next one is something I think most of the UK know about, which is the now cancelled Garden Bridge, bang in the centre of London, connecting Temple with Waterloo in Southwark. A great concept, but extremely poorly executed. The cost just spiralled out of control, and without the backing of the latest mayor, Sadiq Khan, the project was abandoned in 2017, and is unlikely to happen. Moving towards the Isle of Dogs and Canary Wharf, we have another new pedestrian and cycle crossing. This is proposed to connect Rotherhide with Canary Wharf, and there has been some progress made on this. Just across the way, we have the North Greenwich Isle of Dogs crossing, which is again another planned pedestrian cycle crossing. However, I'm, I'm a bit sceptical of its location. If anything, it's more likely to be a tunnel rather than a bridge, similar to the Greenwich Foot Tunnel. However, we will see if this gets built. Crossing number seven is one which you may have heard of and is well progressed, which is the Silvertown Tunnel, and it's the first road crossing of this list. It will link North Greenwich to Canning Town and is aimed to relieve congestion on the existing Blackwall Tunnel. There has been some progress made on this, however, it's probably for another video. The next crossing is one at Charlton, which incidentally connects Charlton in the south to Silvertown. Again, I'm not too sure how demand would actually work in this area. It doesn't seem to be one of the best locations for bridges, but I suppose once it's there, maybe people will start using it. The next crossing has actually already been built, which is the Elizabeth Line Tunnel connecting Customs House for XL and Woolwich. There's not much more I can say about this apart from I think people will actually be using this if they're taking the train. Finally, we hit double digits. Crossing 10 is what TFO is calling a multimodal crossing, linking Thames Mead with Galleons Reach, along a safeguarded alignment. With a word like safeguarded, it suggests progression has actually been made on this, and it could either take form of a bridge, tunnel, or more likely a ferry crossing, similar to that of the Woolwich Ferry. Crossing 11 will link Barking Riverside, where a significant development is currently taking place in the north, to Thamesmead in the south. TFL has stated it could be an extension of the Overground, which is already being extended from Barking. Crossing 12 is also a strange one, which is the connection between Raynham and Belvedere. Again, this is likely to be a ferry crossing, but based on demand, I'm not too sure what would actually happen just due to the current land uses, which looks largely industrial. Finally, the last crossing TFO are proposing is the Lower Thames crossing, which ironically is outside London. This has made some significant progress 
and is severely needed to ease congestion on the Dartford crossing, which is already one of Europe's busiest river crossings. The new link will connect Essex with Kent, and several options have already been proposed, but that's for another video. Right, so those are the 13 river crossings highlighted in 2015. It's now 2020, and things have moved on in the last five years, with four crossings essentially getting the green light. But if you want to find out what they are, you're going to have to wait till the next video. If you did like this video, give us a thumbs up, and if you do want to see a video on something specific, leave a note in the comments below. Hope you enjoyed, thanks for watching, and see you next time.